Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Market Check brought to you by Because Bitcoin. Happy Wednesday, everybody. The midpoint of our week. We are one week removed, I think, from the officially official <laughs> announcement of the approval last week. Uh, I, I want to say that we launched on Thursday, but yeah, I mean, we continue to to see how the market is is going to digest it, both in you know, like I was saying yesterday, and in, in the immediate term flows, as, as well as the intermediate term through those same flows, as well as kind of uh, the narrative and the context that develops around it. But uh, welcome, guys. I am Snorlax. You guys also know me as Tommy. I'm joined by Max, Tucker, and Jackus. Welcome, guys. A reminder that there is no second best daily YouTube live stream to talk about these markets. And now real quickly, before we get cooking and sharing that big, juicy alpha, we always appreciate when you guys smash that like button. Uh, and of course, you know, we're, we're going to bug you again. <laughs> it, it might be Max. It might be me. It might even be Jackus. It might even be Tucker. Who knows? Maybe. Um, but we probably will bug you for the like button again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so definitely make sure to smash it before we get started. And it is Wednesday, um, <laughs> you know, so you might not feel too inclined to smash the like button today. But hey, we're still one week removed from the Bitcoin spot ETF and it's still January. So you guys should have plenty of energy uh, to hit that thing as much as pop as humanly possible. But uh, let's set the stage for the show, guys. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin has not really moved too much this week right i mean that that's somewhat self-explanatory it's it's kind of trading within the range uh of you know i, I wouldn't i wouldn't even call it a wipeout right but we did have a bit of a, a pretty strong sell-off in the wake of the spot etf launch um you know selling that was largely caused by grayscale bitcoin um you know having finally that liquidity and and the means to be able to to sell into uh, you know, in last week's approval and and thus far this week as well, we, we've seen them continue to sell. Um, but yeah, I mean, Bitcoin is, like I said, more or less kind of setting the stage for, um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't even want to use the word ping pong because that hasn't necessarily been the case between, you know, within this little range. But uh, I do think you can play Bitcoin essentially through pivots, right, which is you know, 43.5, 44K, and then 42K. And you don't ever want to be too lower time frame, but I do think that structurally the setup is there to pay attention to those levels, right? You break above 43.5, 44K, you probably go back and, and challenge those highs again, maybe even more, right? I mean, the case to be made for another leg higher on Bitcoin is, is still a pretty good one, right? Um, and, and then, of course, you know, the flip side of that, you lose 42K, you probably go down, you tag mid 30s, low or high 30s uh, in, in some sort of wipe that right, wipes out the, uh, you know, the, all of the range of stops. I think that's certainly possible, too. The important thing is we have a contextual framework kind of trading within this range that will allow us to tackle either of those scenarios. And, you know, for now, I think it's it's still about Bitcoin showing its hand. Meanwhile, you have altcoins catching a very strong bid. Um, not necessarily Ethereum, but definitely certain altcoins uh, I'm looking. I, I mean, I see that we still have a, a decent bit of red, right? And, and some of that is uh, a bleed over from the stock market. Although you do have some altcoins that have caught a bit today, right? Like a soul, like a say, I think there are some other layer ones in there as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, we are seeing probably, I mean, maybe the more, um, you know, notable case this morning of, of downside is what we're seeing in equities, which is hardly even downside. But I think I would call it more at this point, uh, weakening momentum just just after this the uh, absolutely gnarly rally that we've had since October, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, trading six or seven hundred points off the low as aggressively as we did. It might even even be like eight hundred points. I'm not even sure, but uh, <laughs> we are finally seeing some signs that there could be some slowing of that momentum. We've talked many many times about that window of weakness uh, that we are now trading into January seventeenth through February second. You might see some finally might see some weakness in uh, the equity market where we haven't seen it, like I said, since since this last October. So uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I think that creates a, an interesting backdrop for crypto as well. Does that lead to more material downside in crypto or does it lead to kind of just a stagnant and possibly sideways market? Uh, I, I think either is possible, honestly. And, and I will say if we do go sideways, that would probably continue to benefit risk and altcoins in spurts. But welcome guys. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Happy middle of the week. Um, it, it's good to be back. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys are seeing in the market today. Um, 
you know, given the backdrop that we kind of have and most majors are red on the day, but it is pretty early. And I don't think that it's anything, you know, outside of, uh, you know, the context of the range. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to, I'd like to mention that Will is personally attacking me right now with his new profile picture. And I find it very hurtful. I find it very <laughs> offensive as somebody who is about to pre-order the Apple vision pro. I don't appreciate being trolled because when I'm when I'm all hooked up with my speed goggles on and I'm aping shitters on Jupiter and Uniswap and I've then paid for the Apple Vision Pro a hundred times over, you know, I'm going to be the one laughing, Will, you know, and I just think that to come in here knowing how excited I am about the Vision Pro, you know, to troll me like that, it's very offensive, Will. It's, it, it's very, it's, it's wrong, you know, it's, Imagine fading the Apple Vision Pro. Like that could never be me. Never in a million years. Tucker, would you ever fade the Apple never, Vision Pro? Never. Never. Imagine fading Apple, period, man. No. No. Dude, I this mean, is like it, the iPhone coming out and Will being like, <laughs> no one wants to touch their screen. Everyone wants buttons. Who wants to touch their screen? This is the first gen <laughs> Apple product, man. And you're fading it, Will. All, all I can say is imagine buying a small car over an Apple Vision Pro. Will, what Imagine kind that. of car are you talking about that costs three thousand dollars? Talk about I mean, a shitter. Any any used car out there? <laughs> Will, <laughs> okay, Buddha. Will's just too old, man. He doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. Will's just too old. Brutal, savage, wrecked. Absolutely <laughs> taken down. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Imagine fading this, man. Imagine fading it. All right, listen. It's a boring day in the markets, but I titled today's show, It's Time to Have an Honest Discussion About Crypto, guys. It's time to have an honest discussion about crypto. And as Bitcoin's sitting here at 42.4, it's now, you know, roughly, what, $6,000 off of its high. I think it's finally time to say it's over. And um, <laughs> it's over for the bears because we are reaccumulating <laughs> at support right now. And I think it's time we have an honest talk about this reaccumulation at support, guys. So, so listen, I don't know what all these lines are that Tucker's drawing, but I actually I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing out there. Um, I would be open to Bitcoin taking one more stab at the lows, maybe taking out some of those wicks. But I actually it, it pains me to say it because of how how frustrated I am with his his trolling of a revolutionary product called the Apple Vision. But I actually do agree with Will's outlook. Which again, it pains me to say because of what he's doing to me with that profile picture today. Uh, but I actually do think that it's going to be tough to get the entry that everybody is 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 craving. Um, I don't believe you're going to have the luxury of a forty percent drop before before the Bitcoin having, and you're going to get to just shove obvious support again. I think that we are now in a trending market, and uh, you know I think you're going to have to be aggressive on on quick, maybe even intraday flushes, but. Um, you know, I, I guess like worst case for Bitcoin, I could see a stab down at like 39, you know, something like that, which, again, I don't think would be the worst thing in the world. Tucker, could you take a measured move from the high of this year so far all the way down to 39? Like what percentage would that be? And something we've talked about quite a bit on this show is the idea of as Bitcoin matures, you know, diminished volatility, both to the upside and to the downside. And I just think that it, it's going to be very unlikely to see a 40% crash um, unless we're talking about a new all-time high and then a, a bear market. Then I think you can open the door to like a 40% plus crash for sure. But in a trending market, which is what we're in, I think two cycles ago, you could get 40% drops and still maintain bullish market structure in an uptrend. Bitcoin was like a thousand bucks or less. You know, the 2016, 2017 cycle, you had a lot of 30 to 35% drops. Last cycle, you had some that were around 30, you know, pretty normal. And I think this cycle, you know, it wouldn't be out of the normal to see 25 or even 30 percent drops um, in price. And then, you know, we rapidly recover and, you know, we get some more uh, hopefully price discovery. So, yeah, I'd be open to, you know, taking out all these lows. But again, I'm not waiting for it like I'm positioned aggressively from lower. I actually think that altcoins look pretty good. And I also would contend that we're at this point in the cycle where we should start to see Bitcoin dominance trend down soon, aggressively. 
And then that opens the door towards things like Ethereum and I guess a lot of these fresh tickers like you know Dimension and I think Mantis coming out tomorrow. Um, a lot of these altcoins, really just like the total two index should start performing pretty well. And I think for that, we want to see Bitcoin trending up, but we want to see Bitcoin trending up and just kind of lagging a little bit. You know, we don't want it to lead anymore. But anyways, I don't want to monologue. What do you guys think? Man, I think that each time you say uh, that uh, coin on D, I hear I hear dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm I, like, I'm not buying Dimension. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a good idea to uh, go ahead and uh, look at the uh, the speed goggles sales when they come out. And if they do well, the market goes up. And if they do bad, the market goes down. So, I mean, you should make your decisions based on that specifically. Well, I don't even know how I can get through today's show. With you fighting Apple Vision, man. <laughs> I don't know how I can do it. I'm upset. I mean, it's only three times the price of their phone. You know? <laughs> two two times the price of an average computer. Well, all you have to do, all you have to do is just finance <laughs> it. Ten equal payments of thirty-five dollars. And then it's yours. Then you can you can be a pioneer of new tech. It would be a hundred payments of Thirty-five dollars. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you need to take a mortgage that's on. Uh, true. I need to get some more from. coffee in me. You take a mortgage out, amortize it over thirty years. Yeah. To pay thirty-five dollars of like every month. <laughs> yeah, man. Those uh, <clears throat> zero interest. You just put everything on a firm, and you're fine, man. Imagine, imagine micro loans where you like you buy Apple Vision Pro, but you pay three point five dollars a month. For like <laughs> what you twenty years. That's how years? you know it's over, man. That's <laughs> it's when like, it's over. <laughs> Look, if if they come out, if they come out with fifty year to a hundred year home loans, I, I'm on board with Apple Vision Pro selling. Will, Will, I have a question. What do Will, you think about but, this comment? Which one? I put it on the screen. To get to get their entry in what? Yeah, Bitcoin. And, Bitcoin? I think I think Lewis is trolling. I don't, oh, I mean, I don't think so. Look, Lewis, Lewis is an advocate for buying assets once they've appreciated. So it, mm -hmm. I, it's perfectly understandable. Look, yep. your, your entry is coming soon. 60K will be relatively soon. Your entry will be available for you and you will be buying much higher. Uh, no, so This is a good comment. Will, you're going to get Apple Vision. We're gonna force you to have Apple Vision because you work for this yeah. company. So yeah. it'll be mandatory. Yeah. By the way, Will, when you said that you will buy Apple Vision Pro when they introduce fifty-year mortgages, so I have to inform you they are doing that in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I can tell you. Look, when when, when we look back at Apple Vision. Oh, right. shit. Well, just... I That's think what happens. The wrong button. That's what happens when you talk shit about Apple. Oh, Vision hold on. Pro. Yeah, I mean, Apple, Apple's disrupting the industry right now, and that's me. Uh, but <laughs> when, <laughs> when I get, uh, you know, when when I get uh, an Apple Vision Pro, and uh, by the way, I got an email saying it's coming out February 2nd. I should be super hyped. And we go back and we look at the sales. I'm sure, I'm, I'm almost positive they might be able to sell 100 by the end of 2025. <laughs> Such a hater, bro. Such a hater. <laughs> Dude, this is, hater. this is equity market price action. This is Ken Griffin price action right here. It literally is. It's unfortunate. Who, who's Ken Griffin? Who's Ken Griffin, man? I'll show you in a picture. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Look, all of retail will get their entry soon because retail likes buying a lot higher. A lot higher is coming really soon. Entries will be set for everybody. <laughs> this is Ken Griffin, Jackus. Jackus, Ken, Ken Griffin is the puppeteer, man. Ken Griffin he's the is one the, who uh, comes he's the one working off. the strings behind the market. He's the CEO of Citadel. Oh, shit. Yes. 
You should see this house that he's building, man. It's absolutely He's the one who ridiculous. comes to your, your son's football games and watches no, you from the other it. side of the field. Stop it. No, no, no. I, listen, <laughs> Bill. I dictate the rules at the football games. <laughs> when you're like, who's that guy that keeps showing up? That That's kid. He, he's on the other side. Yeah. When you go to make a trade and you're like, who's selling? That's Ken. He's on the other side. But you know what? We're going to make him buy our bags. Our crypto bags. So One so, day. what are you guys' thoughts if he buys an Apple Vision Pro? Just out of curiosity. I'm thinking that he could make that much money within like 10 seconds of his work day. So he yeah, <laughs> probably so, wouldn't even well, face yeah. Okay, so... It, if that's the case and he doesn't buy an Apple Vision Pro, what does that say about Apple Vision Pro? Oh, he'll have Apple Vision Pro, Will. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> They're going to send it to him for free just so he has one. I wish I could hide the ticker and ask you guys what you thought about this chart. Reclaim. So are are we all in the same camp that uh, the Bitcoin ETH dominance chart was created by the U.S. government and Russia and Ukraine colluding? What is uh, this? All right, let's have a constructive. Let's have a constructive conversation. People show up for Alpha. We're goofing around too much. Will's fading the most revolutionary product of the next decade, but it's fine. Let's let's have a constructive conversation, guys. So. Tucker, walk me through what we're looking at here. What are what are we trying to decipher? I'm trying to figure out whether Soul is going to outperform ETH in the coming. The answer month. to that is no. The answer oh, to that is no. Max. Yeah, what do you, the what do you think that happens to this chart? What do you what do you I'm, think happens? I'm not gonna I think those look. hang on, hang on. I think there's some equal lows sitting at 0.025, and those get hit first. Ooh, five? Well, yeah. Max, I, 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 I tend to lead on Max's side on this like, one, bro. Kind of that that cluster. I think so is gonna bleed. Here? Maybe mm-hmm. there or above, one above to the right. To the right. right in there. Yeah, like somewhere right in there. Like those lows are not safe, in my opinion. I think you I think you deviate below those, and everyone goes, It's over, Burj Khalifa, and then just like deviation, bro. No. You know I, I, mean? I, I will say I will say this. No, yeah, no, no. That's too high, Tucker. That's too no, high. That, yeah, that, that is too high. But, like, come down a little bit, Tucker. I on the pair. No. I did. No I way we go that deep. No, no, no. T- Tucker, Tucker, come come down just a little bit. Just a little bit. No, no, 2,000 months. Right there. Right where, right where you got your mouse. What, right right there. here? Yeah, because you, if, if you pull to the left, you got a lot of lot of touches there, right? And you tend not to, you tend not to violate the highs. So keep going left. There you About go. There. I, yeah, that's that's where I think your liquidity lies for Soul ETH right there. That I think that's a fair assessment too. It's nothing crazy. It's super fair because uh, I, I like to see if the trend's going to remain bullish against ETH. It needs to stay above previous consolidation range. I mean, here's Dude, Soul ETH chart there. is clearly dumping clover, man. It's going to two thousand, and I don't care. And I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> It could, know. but I, deal, I'm, I'm deal just with saying. It. Deal with it. it I, no, I, no, no. I I'm, can't I mean, deal it, with it. Look, you it have could. To. Oh, I have all, overinvested by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is, is that is that if Soul dumps down to the low range, where where Max is saying, I think Soul will underperform against ETH at that point. Ooh, we got the sniper boys. We're going up. Give me a just tap cherry, of just cherry picking up. time frame listen, so that it prints listen, a high signal. We are bouncing, but we are not going up. Oh, when's the last time we had a green buy signal on the side? drop it on the day. Thousand percent ago. <laughs> exactly. Seventy <70% laughs> percent ago. Exactly. What? Yeah. What would Tucker, you say? Daily. Will? Daily. Tommy, jump in here. There you go. That's uh, that's better. Where, where's your green signals on the daily? Tommy, jump in here. Let's go. I uh, I will be honest. I'm actually in the camp with Tucker. I think we're about to find a bottom on Soul ETH. I don't think we're. Right, I, right, I will right. say a week ago, a week ago, two weeks ago, I thought what we were coming all the way down to 
you know, tagged the stop so that at the bottom of that range. But now I'm not I'm not so certain anymore. I, what uh, time frame, it, Tommy? What time frame is the bottom? Um, I mean, like I, 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 I agree I, that on H4, I do agree it probably could go up a little. But on the daily or weekly, it's going down. I just think Sol USD down. is probably finding a bottom right now. And if it, if Sol USD has not found a bottom, um, then I will say I agree with you. I think Sol ETH can probably come all the way down to to two thousand or um, whatever that level would technically be um, described as. But if Sol USD has bottom, then I do think that you're probably a, about to find a bottom on Sol ETH. Um, Oh, what is this? Oh, wow. That was not bad. Not <laughs> bad at all. It That's was, fantastic. But before we, we get into this, guys, something that is not so fantastic is the like count on this video so far, guys. We have 36 likes on the YouTube stream, guys. That's low. That's low for you guys. It's very low. You guys are enjoying the content. Please consider just taking one quick moment and hitting that thumbs up button for us, guys. It does wonders for the channel. It does wonders for the algorithm. And the reason that we're able to grow so quickly is because of you guys. So if you could just take one quick moment before we continue, hit that thumbs up button for us. Actually, let me walk that back. Let me walk that back. That's not what I want you guys to do. I don't want you to hit the like button. I don't want you to smash the like button. I want you to destroy the like button. I want Mises, mouse eyes. Mouse Amos, multiple mouses broken. All right, guys, absolutely destroy that. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for being here. Happy Wednesday, happy January 17th. Thrilled that you guys are here again. Welcome, welcome, but please do us a solid. Hit that thumbs up button for us. Furthermore, if you guys are new here, this is Market Check brought to you by Because Bitcoin. This is the full cast here. Myself, Snorlax, Tucker, Jackus, and Will, we are live Monday through Friday at 10.55 a.m. Eastern time every single weekday it's basically an hour and a half to two hour long alpha dump we talk charts we talk price we talk narrative and generally we just have a great time so please consider subscribing to the channel as well and for those of you now watching on twitter or i guess it's called x now please consider just hitting that heart button it's super easy because you guys are obviously already signed in hit that heart button hit that like button and then also if you are just coming across our twitter make sure to follow us as well but yeah guys thank you so much for being here Thank you guys for liking the content. Maybe retweet, maybe share it with a friend, let them know what's up. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for being here. Let's get back to the show. So Tucker, you're drawing some Tucker Nachi lines, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just just future resistance, man. <clears throat> you know, I think uh I think, you know, you look at all these, I think you probably just do something like write this line up a little bit and then maybe come mm. back and then you know something like propaganda that. no <laughs> propaganda will no propaganda <laughs> propaganda i'll show you i'll show it to you on bitcoin man it works real nice on bitcoin i actually oh, think wow. soul is pretty clean right now man i mean yeah, you, you hold the range lows and it's game on I, I i would like to get in some stock discussion i know we promised that uh that we would probably talk about it today, but I don't know. I mean, Jack, is, uh, what, what do you think the the like button needs to look like to kind of get into the, the discussion of the uh, the alphas? Uh, probably mm -hmm. like I've shared enough alpha. Uh, this I, week I got I got a little week. something since I'm cheaper than you. What do you, what do you, think, <laughs> what do you think the like button should look like? <laughs> Let's get a hundred. Let's get a hundred. Hundred is very that's doable. Go for hundred. That's so doable, man. That's so. One hundred and ten, at least. Well, let's see him do it. What are we at right now? Listen, hundred likes is the new floor, right? It's the new yeah. floor. Floor price has risen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Who's gonna sweep it? The the market makers here at BB are controlling the floor price at one hundred likes. It is what it is. Deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, listen, I uh I mean they Otherwise got that, man. That's light chart. work for them, man. That that's light work. They're they're are they're already like halfway there. They're already halfway there. What are they at? Fifty? They're fifty-three. Eh. They got that. That's okay. They got it. They got it. They'll get it done, man. They'll get it done. Um 
Do we want to go back to Seoul or no? You want yeah, to let's on? talk about Seoul because Seoul has been a market leader. I mean, basically the past six months, you know, before the action really started. Actually, going back even further to 2022, Seoul was the first uh, the first ticker to actually bottom during the FTX capitulation. And we noted that if you looked at Seoul USD capitulated under 10 bucks, Seoul Bitcoin and Seoul ETH were both the first, I guess, like alt BTC and alt ETH pairs to actually bottom. Um, and then subsequently, Seoul USD led off of its bottom and has been driving the market ever since it, it decided to explode in, in Q4. So uh, we talked about this yesterday. I won't make them pull it up again, but it's possible that Seoul is like 30 days ahead of where Bitcoin is. And Bitcoin hasn't had that final expansion up that Tucker, maybe you could highlight. Yeah, that one right there that last leg up on Seoul that we had to like 125 roughly it's possible that bitcoin is roughly where you know Seoul was at like 75 or 80 bucks where even from a sentiment perspective a lot of people myself included were like yeah Seoul might tag i saw a lot of people calling for 80 bucks on Seoul during like december that december rally and i saw a lot of people calling for 80 and i was like yeah sell at 75 you know, 80 seems to be consensus. It's going to get front run. And in my opinion, 48K on Bitcoin feels like 80 on Seoul. Everybody and their grandma wanted 48K on Bitcoin. Everybody's like 48K. We're going to sweep that high. 48K. That's the top. Na, 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 na. Okay. It seemed like 48K for Bitcoin was, was that $80 level for Seoul. I think it's going to be a pretty unique instance. If for some reason, 48K, that little sweep that we had so far in Bitcoin ends up being the global top because it seemed like it was consensus at the time. I feel like we need to either like, I mean, we had the option. We could have front run it and not gotten there or we need to slice through it like warm butter and leave everybody just coped and on the side, you know, all the golden pocket boys, you know. Tucker, that you need to tweet that out, Tucker. You need to tweet that out. That's know, good I propaganda. To, I need to tweet more. Man. All you do, do is tweet out your saga, your saga phone two ref link. Like you need to tweet Dude. that's alpha. So it is alpha. Saga saga two is alpha, man. No, no, this chart is alpha. You shilling oh, your yeah, saga yeah. phone two ref link is not alpha. This is what the people want, man. It's all it gets alpha, the people man. going. It does. It does get the people going. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Tommy, Will, Jackus. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was. <laughs> there we I, go. <laughs> I, I was talking about this on Friday here in the Alpha Talk. So that's yeah, I, I agree with it. That's what I think happens. And the For fact that I and Jay is leading both of them. I did not. I did not think that BTC goes that high, but I think that there's a breakout. To, I, to 60k. I, yeah. I think people are riding I and J way too hard, and uh, they're gonna find out that that uh, that horse is uh, you know it's, it's running out of energy. It's uh, it's not gonna quite do as as much performance as people think it is. Uh, Bitcoin, on the other hand, <laughs> I think has significant upside. Um, I would say no. Will Will the contention was that INJ's has led Bitcoin and Soul, and it's gone up so much, so these two should follow. Yeah, I mean INJ is topped for the cycle, in my opinion. Um, and whereas I think Bitcoin is significantly lagging behind, I think Ethereum's even more lagging. I I, I put up a chart a little while ago, and I basically um more or less d told people like, hey. Ethereum's 100% behind Bitcoin right now, like percentage-wise. If you were to take Ethereum, Bitcoin, and set them side by side, Ethereum, to catch up to Bitcoin, has to touch the high end of the flush, which is $3,600. We're currently at $2,600. That's a 100% move um, in, in comparison to where Bitcoin is. And if you take <clears throat> Ethereum from low to high, and take Bitcoin from low to high, it's, it's almost the exact same percentage move. Tit for tat. And I think a lot of people have not considered that at all, right? It's You're just about to watch Willy Wonka make chocolate right now, guys. This this is <laughs> this is true art. 
<laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys, yeah, this is gonna be wild, man. Yeah, okay. you guys are all Charlie in the Chocolate Factory right now. Watch Willy Wonka. Look at this yeah. man go. This, this is the thing that that people are absolutely sleeping on, right? So you you got these other assets that are extremely behind, and everybody tastes I and J, right? Um, you got Ethereum that's extremely behind Bitcoin. You got Bitcoin that's extremely behind I and J. You got Sol that's you know roughly a little bit ahead of Ethereum, in a sense. Really, what I would do, Tucker, is yeah, I'd catch all those highs. Yep, every every single flush high, grab every single flush high across the board. Like people, they they don't understand that patterns are powerful. They tell you everything. What happened with I and J when I and J touched that? Top and uh, there and consolidated, uh, it chilled out for a little bit and then it sent. It absolutely sent, right? What, what, what are we doing right now, roughly about with Bitcoin right now? I, hey, I Will, you're, you're, you're sounding that, a little right? bit. Hey, hey, Will, you're sounding a little oh. staticky, my friend. Is, is that better? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so yeah, I'd say where Bitcoin is sitting right now. You could probably even drop that down a little bit on Bitcoin on the high there. And Bitcoin roughly is in that range, 50 to 52 is, is where I would think. We're going to consolidate here for a little bit. Everybody's going to look for that 30K pullback, wink, wink, right, that everybody keeps on looking for. And the market's going to absolutely leave all of you, like, literally crying, right? Crying, going to your mom, getting in a circle in front of her, and acting like a fetus. That, that, that's what's going to happen here. <laughs> Oh, um, because oh, you're so you are vulgarly descriptive, man. It's so you funny. have such a way with words, Will. It's so elegant. <laughs> it's just you. You're going to be sitting here like, what did I do? What did I do? And I've already had people come to me. Like I, I had, I had a guy yesterday that I respect in the space. He's a pretty cool guy on uh, spaces, and he's like, man, he's like, I want to tell you that I was absolutely wrong. He's like, I was so focused on war and macro conditions. And he's like, and I was trying to trying to be that macro economic. And he's like, I ended up mo- losing the entire move. He's like, I ended up losing the entire cycle because I thought I could buy Bitcoin cheaper. Yeah, there's and- many such cases. Many, many such cases, man. A lot of people miss this move. And honestly, I think I would have missed it if it wasn't for having like you guys as, as team members, because a lot of you were i mean you, we, we kind of check each other at all corners i was super super bearish when bitcoin dropped from 30k i was short for it with the boys of course that was really fun max me, me and you were just, fighting on the show like not really fighting but you we know were. bantering on the show at times about price every day and we ripped that short from like 29k down to 25 it was fantastic and i was super bearish looking for lower and then once it had a failed breakdown Talking Will with with you, Will and Jackus, really kind of flipped me, and I started to say, okay, you know what? This my trade has played out like halfway, but we seem to have committed a failed breakdown of some sort here. Um, and then just talking with you guys kept me in check. So it's like, if it wasn't for the team around me, you know, and my flexibility as an individual and as a trader. I probably would have missed that move too. Like this move is caught. I could see why it caught people. It caught really, really good traders, guys that I respect off guards, you know, because they don't have the team around them. You have to have a team in this environment. You really do. Like I can't, I cannot tell you enough. You have to have other traders that you trust around you. I could see why a lot of good traders miss this move because it's, there's been a lot of noise. There's been a ton of noise, you know, it's a very interesting point in the cycle. Very, very weird. Max, just I'm, yesterday, I'm Max, getting... just, oh, just God, yesterday is... I was checking a video on BB that we did, I think, in, uh, well, it had to be in August or uh, October, but it was right after that drop that you just described. And we talked, like, all macro things. We talked uh, TreadFi. That we, I, I was explaining to you my thesis on the rates, right, with the intermarket analysis and yeah. and all that juicy stuff when we were just beginning, basically. And it was at that point when I talked about BTC after the drop from 30 to 25K. And I was explaining exactly what I'm just keep saying, but it was their life. Uh, and I like 
I was just going through some of those, and it's kind of great to to observe these in retrospect and reflect on those. And I have to I have to give a shout out here for uh, to Max, you know, as he said, for his own reflexivity to change the bias of his and and be able to to swallow you know your own ego in that in in a way and and go along against your own perception when the data is telling you otherwise and that's that's exactly what separates lots of people because most people they they like like you've seen with Scapo, right they will be bearish all <laughs> the way from the bottom with a 200% move on BTC and others so so big, uh, like like one thing is also one thing is also just uh, like tweeting about it, and second is actually trading it, right? That takes balls, in my opinion. Yeah. So well, thanks, Jackus. I mean, I flip because I mean, largely because of you guys, you know, your guys's analysis. So team yeah, effort I mean, across I'm, the board. I, I was I was happy that you know at least one thing that that we discussed definitely resonated and and I, and I bring this up because I think it's important for you to always keep in the back of your mind always keep this in the back of your mind you know and that was a discussion where I told you well in 2021 anybody would have bought 20k bitcoin anybody yeah. would have bought anything below 30 big they they were begging for below 30k bitcoin they're like it's never going to come again and then it gets here and everybody's like oh no it's going lower it's going lower it's like why don't you just start allocating because you're in that price range you told everybody you wanted to buy and now you're telling everybody it's going to go deeper rather than just allocating and like i had to like and, and i i don't like doing this because i feel like it in, induces people to do things i want to discuss this i just that they shouldn't to... um and and that's that's publicly putting out my purchases i had to literally publicly put out like that I was purchasing Bitcoin. He literally purchasing... tweeted out screenshots of his Coinbase orders. <laughs> Do you remember that? He was like, I'm buying here. I don't care. <laughs> and and, and I, I felt like I had to do that to show people the conviction that I have because like it's at the end of the day, if you're a trader, you're putting your money where your mouth is. And the ability to flip bias in addition to that is, is another skill set that only traders have. Uh, non-traders have the the insinuation that something can occur and they continue to think that because they, they don't know how to look at flows or liquidity. And that's how you can tell the difference between the two. But you can go ahead, Jack, before you lose your thought. That's good. As long as it's on the screen, you can continue well. I'll, I'll finish that up later. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I was basically just kind of more or less reaching to that is like always whenever trading or whenever getting into an asset, understand when devaluation has occurred. And that you need to start positioning due to devaluation. Even even if devaluation can get worse, like you you have to start dialing into those positions at that point. But that that's pretty much it. Yeah. So this comment is uh, I have to address it. So <laughs> I feel like it's 2016 all over again. <laughs> ICT is looking for 24k. Well, so. And I'll explain to you why. Um, get, get, can you just zoom in on uh, the BTC chart, Tucker, and show yeah. what's sitting at 24K? And I'll explain to you why he is looking for it and why it won't happen. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Whoa, what is this, the two-week? That looks kind of bad. I can keep the two-week. So uh, good. So at yeah. 24K, what sits there Equal are... Those are equal lows and okay uh equal lows are definitely are definitely like good uh good target sometimes on a like for liquidity right uh apologies if you guys hear some background noise that's my dog playing around <laughs> um if you um so so this is what he's looking for and like looking for targets as equal lows does make sense, but it needs to be adjusted for a context. You cannot just say there are equal lows or equal highs, and we are just going to go there. It th there needs to be more than that. And j just a quick reminder 
So till this day, he is looking for a sweep of Ecolos at $150 from 2015. He kept saying, even during when we went to 20K and then dropped to uh, 3K, he kept screaming that uh, 3K, sorry, $150 for Bitcoin is coming. He kept screaming that. And now he is doing the same. Uh, basically, Tucker, can you go on years... log and zoom out and find that level from uh, eight, when eight was years, it, Jackus? Uh, 2015 to equal lows. Oh, you we won't. Go you gotta find eight. a different chart. You need to go on, yeah, what down? Uh, probably use the index chart. The index. Yeah, the BLX. This is, uh, no, no, no. is it. not the BLX, just, just type BTC USD and there's the index chart. This Search. right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and there are equal lows on many exchanges. Uh, 2015. Wait, 15. Oh shoot, sorry. Yeah, uh, I see. Yeah, so so he kept waiting for these equal lows to, to to get a sweep too, and basically go like for like a hundred dollars, and and that's how he has been wrong, and now he's doing the same thing again, and you have to adjust. Uh, you have to adjust a context to to all of these so you know by the way there are equals on ether too that have not gotten swept you can actually go on ether chart tucker and in this uh in this current uh you know ascending triangle there are equals i think on the daily though these two, by the way, <laughs> these two, yeah, but yeah. there are even more in, uh, yeah, so like there are these two, e it's probably more visible on the daily if you go on a daily, right? And then you can see that there are more on the left of it, there are another equals, yeah, yeah, mark those out, yeah, they're all over the place, man, right? Then to the to the right of uh, like uh, November 2022. Yeah, these are two as well. And November 2022. 22. <laughs> 22. 22 November. Yeah, these? Yeah, above those. Yeah. Above those. Yeah. Just to the right a little bit. These? Right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so, so those, those are another... Close. And you need to keep in mind that not all, like, and you know, at some time there's a potential of these getting swept. But at some point, when a hard time frame structure changes and makes a breakout, then there is just like these are irre irrelevant anymore. There is uh, the liquidity. It, it has moved, you know, people trail their stop losses and there are different forces on the higher time frame than just equal lows. So you cannot treat um, the higher time frame chart the same way you would treat one minute chart on Forex. This is a different market and different time frame. And I see lots of time uh, people from lower time frames trying to do good on higher time frames and they fail and vice versa. It's uh, there are different forces simply, and you know, to be honest, <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna say that, but say uh, it. yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, then text me. I want to know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that's my take for that comment and the equal loss pr problematic. So uh, I, 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 I remember the. I remember the ice the trade that every ICT trader I know was trying to take was from like 35k to 3k Bitcoin. Mm. <laughs> I remember I remember that one uh, a few weeks ago. And that's because yeah. there's a monthly FVG. Uh, yeah. Tucker, if you go to the monthly time frame, the 50 fib of the monthly FVG. Uh, right there, Tucker. Yeah. 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 But also to add to that, like, you know. You had you had the twenty two k right, then you had the thirty three k, and now now we have we're back we're up here in the high forties, low forties, and now we're talking about the thirty k again. Like I, I feel like people just they they sat themselves in the positions that just don't make sense. And to kind of add to Jackus's uh, discussion here, like one thing I've noticed, and and I'll and I'll say this, um, 
lightly because I, I know some good low time trade low time frame traders too, some really good ones. But I've noticed that a, a lot more seasoned traders they, they tend to look at the higher time frames and and the more traditional uh, time frames, which is basically you know what your institutions look at and stuff like that. And then a lot of the newer traders will, will be trying to predict like four month movements on the four hour, which which yeah. makes no sense at all, right? And it, that absolutely no that that's like me trying to predict what will happen in the next eight hours on, on on the weekly chart or on the monthly chart. It makes no sense to try and make that trade. And and that's that's how you can tell like like what somebody's experience level is is are they trying to predict a month or two or three months out on the four hour chart or are they trying to predict you know what will happen in the next day or two on the monthly or weekly like those because th those two things don't come together they just don't make sense. Hmm. Did, did you want to jump in on that, Jackus? I, I heard you say. No, I just think that. The problem, like, obviously, ICT cult is big, and I think uh, it takes more, especially if you go, as I said, on the higher time frames, uh, there are different forces, and, you know, it's not that hard to spot FVG or eco lows on the chart or, like, the typical market structure break pattern, but there is more to it than just that. If it was that easy... There would be, uh, you know, tens of thousands of billionaires out there from the ICT cult. And what people don't realize is that, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to stop there. People don't realize, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to insult anyone. Just wanted to address the ICT, like, uh, cult that, uh, that it's a simple mass gap, guys. Like, uh, like I want to address rather than people, I want to address the principles. And, you know, people are, listen, if people were doing 30 hours, like 30 risk to reward a month, in two years, they would be richer than Jeff Bezos. <laughs> right? Uh, it's not happening. People are not making 30 hours a month. Like, uh, th there are stats for this, and it's hard for people to make uh, more than 5% return a month. Like, there are good months and there are bad months in overall, but there are most people not profitable, and out of those profitable ones, it's uh, people are not making those gains that you see. And the, the people from ICT Cult, they learn quickly, fair value gaps and they are powerful tools but they are tools they are not uh they are they are not like they're not the end all be all essentially yeah is what yeah, you're trying to say basically you, you, when when you're looking at things from from a holistic standpoint I just to add to your point there it, t tools are intended to be used together right you, you're, you're not going in and digging a hole with just a shovel. You're, you're digging a hole with a shovel, especially if you're going to lay a sidewalk, and then you're coming out with trowels and putting the the and smoothing out the the cement, you know. And and you're also using a truck to pump the cement into, you know, wherever you wherever you created your path from. Like a lot of people, they they take things as static and they and they're like, oh, this thing says this, or this Fibonacci level by itself determines the entire market direction. And it's like, no, you should use the Fibonacci in, you know, in confluence with, with other tools and, and see what you can come up with. That, that's what creates a project in a sense. Whereas like other people are sitting here and they're, they're talking about one data point, right? And th it's the same thing with data points. And, and this is why the, the conversation kind of shifts towards that direction is people look at one data point and they're like, this is the end all be all for, for the market is this data point. No, it's it's not at all. You're looking at one data point. I mean, remember the discussion, Max, when we were talking about jobs and like everybody kept talking about, well, jobs is declining. It's like, okay, what are claims? Mm -hmm. And then everybody shut up because nobody even thought about claims. Yeah, like, it, it's it's just the consistent, you know, misuse of data because you're trying to look for something to be in the direction of what you want versus what's actually going on. And no matter what, will what people always need to remember is don't don't eat the Snickers. Don't just don't. That's do the it. most important part. 
people often overlook that that critical detail. <laughs> Don't do Don't it. Don't pick up the Snickers, but smash yeah. the like button. That's the name of the game. <laughs> Guys, what? okay, what what likes are we at? Uh, let's see. 76. All right, guys. So if we make it to 110, Will promised he's going to share some alpha with us. And trust me, you want to hear Will's alpha, all right? So some people some people think I don't have alpha, so it's okay. I understand. I understand why we're not getting there. But I can tell you last night in the Discord, for those of you who don't think I have alpha, basically pulled off a cool 15X. Tucker got it and got a cool 5. So, I mean, you know, don't don't provide any. Tucker can vouch for that, too. Yes, I can vouch. It did like 5x in an hour, and I was like, all right, I'm going to take that and shove it into something else. But yeah, it's up like 15x, right? Yeah, I got out roughly. I didn't get out completely. I got out with a good chunk around 15x. You know, cool 500 to $7,500. Nothing big. Nothing too big. I got a little chart for you guys. Why am I the only one on camera? What's going on today? Because you are bad the hair most day? pretty. What'd you say? <laughs> you are the most pretty out there. Oh, Jack is. I've been I've been hey. going back and forth uh blowing my nose, so <laughs> go off camera for that. All right. Here's a nice little chart for you guys. I'll see if I can make it a little smaller here. Let's go to the weekly. <laughs> Nah, we got to go to the three-day. I got to make it bigger. I've been working on this. I'm going to tweet this out tomorrow probably. I'm st I, I keep adding things to it. I keep working on it. Um, but basically, this is where I think we are in the cycle right now, guys. I think we are right here kind of labeling things out. So we're going to start here with – actually, I'll just make this thicker so we can see it. Make these fibs a little bit thicker. I really would contend that we are just getting started, you know, and most people are completely caught off guards. So I've identified kind of like where our deep value is, right? Where we had like the big bear market drop, you know, we lost our bull market range low. And I think that after the 2017 cycle through 2018, you could say that when we lost, and this is actually like total crypto market cap, by the way. So when we lost like that 200 billion region, you know, 180 billion region, when Bitcoin dropped from, what was that like 7k down to 3k i don't even remember what it was exactly at um whatever this drop was when it hit 3k this is your deep value now what's different about you know last cycle versus this cycle is that you know this previous cycle we exited deep value and then we you know we came back into it and then we you know then we moved out this cycle we didn't okay and how i know that this is where we're at right now this box and we have left the deep value and we're not coming back to it is because of the time from when we entered the deep value range to when we exited the deep value range 500 and it's actually the same 503 days so we spent 503 days dinking around reaccumulating now granted it's a little bit different because we actually left and had a big fake out which is why all the golden pocket boys think that this is it um, but in my opinion we're actually probably right around here We've just left the deep value zone. And I would say the next leg up takes us up to this blue line, which is like the retest of the complacency shoulder of the bull market, which for right now, it would basically be like just shy of two trillion. So I think the next leg we come up, hit just maybe you know, about two trillion, just shy, pull back a little bit, you know, and then I think it's literally just just a straight up bull market. But this is where I think we're at in the cycle here. You know, I don't think we're going to come back down now and have like, you know, another 500 days reaccumulating or anything like that. We spent 500 days, you know, in deep value. 500 days in deep value. I love That's that it. you are using the time aspect, Max. Thank you, Jackus. But that's all I got for you guys. Questions, comments, concerns, general outlooks, of course, no pressure as always. The the time horizon, you know, the, the, the time metric is uh, the time dim dimension really is the most interesting. The more I think about it, 
the time is just uh, super strong dimension. And I feel uh, the more I use it, the the more alpha there is. And most people are just focusing on levels, which is good. Uh, well, most people are focusing, which is dumb shit like uh, Bloomberg News <laughs> or some some. I I don't want to insult insult anyone. <laughs> I, I mean, like news in general, right? Like uh, like they, they they care about what Larry thinks says about crypto and so forth. But um, but the time horizon is just so underestimated. But that's that's really? because people think that news is alpha. Jackus, that's that's always been the issue. People think news is the reason to stay sideline, or news is the reason to buy, even though news travels at the speed of like a, a sloth around the world. Right? By the time you've heard it, all trades have been made. I mean, and, and... I mean, the the news are a buy or sell. It's a sell when the news is bullish. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> yep. You just gotta, you just gotta reverse it. When they are telling you to buy, you need to sell. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, I th I think I think this is what happens, and I also see a lot of people calling for ten trillion for total exactly. crypto market cap. Make a lot of sense to front run that level and hit seven trillion. In my hey, opinion, we talked about it, Max. We talked about it live on the show before it ever occurred. People started talking about ten. We were looking between what six and seven. I like six and seven. It's a perfect one point six one eight retrace as well. Perfect. Which of course is, I mean, look at where we topped out last cycle. I mean, so what a coincidence, right? So from twenty seventeen high to bear market low, and then look at where we peaked out, like globally, right at the one point six one eight. You know, and then a couple percent of it. Pretty crazy. Yeah, but you cannot use TA. It's all astronomical, man. Oh, that's what I forgot. Yeah, my apologies. This is all made up. It's all made up. It doesn't work. Tucker, I want you to take us through your chart, man. You you were you were making some chocolate. I feel like I got the golden ticket. I'm in the chocolate factory, and now I want I want some narration. I got you. I, I got you. Sorry, I was just I was responding to to this guy about Henrik Zeberg, who is a complete <laughs> clown, and I cannot stand. Um, but anyway, that was the most honest thing I heard from you, Zachary. It was like so brutally straightforward. And Dude, I can't, I can't with that guy. I seriously can't. I don't even know who that is. Oh man, he's an Elliot Wave Moon Boy melt up and then crash theorist who's been wrong for 24 months. And yeah, <laughs> was, was he super cycle in 2021? Was he a super cyclist? Yeah, just about every incorrect take you could have had. He's had. <laughs> Super but, cycle. Dude, yeah. not not to shit talk Elliot Waves, but I've literally never once even considered using Elliot Waves. Like they I don't see any alpha in Elliot Waves. I really yeah. don't. The, the, the alpha is that they are great hindsight tool. Like you can justify mm. anything with Elliot Waves. There is always some A B C one two three four five H uh, B C D E <laughs> a wave that that that's on some time frame. And if it doesn't work, you don't, you will just say, oh no no no, that was this wave or this wave. So, yeah, that's what I see. I follow a couple guys yeah. that are like Elliot Wave guys, and I, I'll tell you, they they have literally been so wrong for so long, man. Like, no, this is wave B of impulse two. Like, just it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. I've never, and usually that's where I find inspiration to look into new strategies is I follow somebody and they tweet it and something, it looks like it played out or it looks like there's something there. It literally looks like Elliot Waves is just identifying that like things move up and move down. And it, it's legit. Like you can, you can uh, justify any movement in hindsight and you can adjust it based on Elliot Wave theory and it will work. The problem is if you want to use it in real time, which you do if you want to make money, and then you don't really know what's going on. That's the problem. And I, but I'm not saying there isn't someone that can make money on Elliot Waves, right? Because like 
like support and resistance is pretty simple and still people will lose money on it most people right so so it's always about who's using it and maybe there is someone that can make money on elliot waves uh and i do see them like like i sometimes use sort of like when i see the one two three four five the basic one and then uh so so, so i know that uh correction might be coming but it's a simple you know I, i'm not sure it's like an Elliott wave or anything it's really just that uh, the market makers just did a you know um basically three swings higher and then there is a possibility that they will want to run stops before the next move, basically but it's yeah. uh it, it's all liquidity concepts at the end yeah. of the day right i mean everybody kind of wants that magic bullet that's going to be yeah. like uh you know that so you don't have to make any decisions at your own discretion to trade when that's exactly what trading is. You're going to have to make decisions that make you uncomfortable uh, in the moment. I, I like to think about that um, that thing from Kung Fu Panda, right? Where he has the dragon scroll and he, he thinks that it's going to give him all these special powers. And then he opens it up and it's just a reflection on on who it, who he is. And I, I feel like that's a perfect uh, analogy for what trading is. Yeah. Yep. Wait, Jim, what do you guys, what do you guys think about the, uh, what do you guys think about the, Oh, what are they called, man? The crab and the bat. Uh, what is it called? Harmonics. Yes. What do you think? I like those. those. I, I like think they work. I like them more than Elliott waves for sure. Some harmonics are, are, are based on math or like algorithms, so they have yeah. a little bit more a higher a higher hit rate, in my opinion. And there's, there's sacred left, numbers, right? Tommy. They're sacred. It's there's like a less human. <laughs> um, discretion involved with harmonics it's fibonacci like i've seen them work yeah. i've seen guys kill the market with them but i've also seen guys that are complete frauds just make up like a bunch of fake bats and like it just never works and then they just adjust it until it works so yeah, yeah that's that, like anything well that, that's because there are always people that are good with it right they, they, they take something and then they master it and then there are the larpers who just steal shit like the lady of scam and she will just copy pasta anything and 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 then it like it it seems nice on the chart it looks very you know visually pleasing but there is no alpha and then it makes seem like none of these uh, stuff work but it, as always it's about the context guys as i keep on reminding so the harmonics, as Tommy is saying there is a mass to it but you have to adjust it to to certain like like principles like is it happening like do you get get a bearish because what i found out the more you study chart is that there is always a bearish and bullish something right and at any point of time you can justify being both bullish and bearish and unless you have the context which you do on multiple things then like <laughs> Like it doesn't matter that much. So, for example, if if when we just broken out of the to to give a real life example, when we broken out of the thirty one k range, twenty five to thirty one k, there was a bearish divergence after bearish divergence and SFP after SFP, and I said it's all useless if we just broken from a two hundred days long accumulation on a strong volume. But like none of these matter because. Uh, essentially you know the, the the pressure will be to go higher on the higher time frame you need to see the context here and that's what's happened Talk uh, I, I, that. I wanted to speak Dude, on the it way. looks too similar man we're yeah but, but one's battering. at the range high one's at the range low I wanted to speak on the LA way thing though because like it, the one thing I've noticed at least through cycles is that it, it can work. It's just a lot of people manipulate it. And then in addition to that, a lot of people try to use low time frames. And Elliott Wave was never designed for low time frames. It was, it was designed for higher time frames, you know, weekly, monthly, so on and so forth. And that's again, that's that's where a lot of people get it wrong. They try and put it on the four hour and say this is an Elliott wave. It's like you have no clue what you're talking about because the, it's not designed for four hour, eight hour, six hour. And some people will try and argue that, but I mean in reality, it's just a fact. It is literally a fact. Like if you go and read the Elliott Wave theory, it's 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 created for high time frame moves, and it's created for cycles essentially, and or you know decade long, four years, so on and so forth type type patterns. And it 
it more or less just feeds on because I I've I've read into it. I've read into it. I don't utilize it as as a thesis for my trading, but I do like to look at it from time to time and just identify areas where I think that you know it could have played in into uh the market. But again, it is more of a hindsight play when you're looking at Elliott Wave. Then it, you'll never see the move coming if you're using Elliott Wave and trying to say that that you're like, oh, okay, this is this is wave five because I've seen people see say wave five and then fifty percent down further. They say wave five again, and it's like, bro, like, do you have any clue what's going on? Well, I was off by no, you were off by a lot. Fifty percent's a massive <laughs> drop, so you weren't off by a little bit. Um, and and again, that's that just feeds back to people who who understand and people that don't. And again, it's it's also a great you know as as Jack has highlighted hindsight type type of look versus uh, trying to figure out what's coming in in the future. What's coming in the future for me is depicted by volume. It's depicted by strength, your RSI and your stochastic and so on and so forth. If your strength is dwindling down and you're getting close to like devaluation ranges, you can look for a big bounce. Right. And, it, and the same thing with VIX and so on and so forth. I think VIX kind of works in a similar way. Um, if your VIX is getting absolutely demoed for multiple months, so again, that's devaluation, right? You need to play the devaluation to the upside, just like you need to see overvaluation and play the overvaluation to the downside. And I, I think Tommy does really well with that with uh, when it comes to like looking at the books and seeing what's going on there. And th those are the kind of things that you have to do. Again, you're measuring multiple tools, not just one. And then like, okay, all these tools together are signaling this versus saying, oh, the Elliott wave, uh, the A to the B and then uh, wave two here, we're going uh, $455,000 Bitcoin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do we see it, guys? Do uh, we see it? Can no, I man. See it? Okay, listen, what they are doing is they are manipulating the sentiment right now. And you can get a like a maybe you know you get a sweep of this uh, intraday low or something, but uh, it's the manipulation of uh, sentiment here on the H4. That, that, yeah, that's yeah. all I it's mean, been this, though. Jack even said, this wouldn't be that bad, you know. I mean, just sweep all these lows, just no. I'm, like people, people are, are missing the freaking clouds in the sky. They're looking up, they're seeing the sun's blocked out, and they're like, man, that sun's kind of dim. It's like no, those are clouds <laughs> blocking the sun. Like, <laughs> like open your eyes. Like you're, you're literally getting played in this range. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think there are better better uh, coins to be at right now than BTC. But obviously, BTC is the index, right? So. <laughs> yeah. I think the coin I like the most right now is Say. Yeah, Say looks strong. That looks like sold to me before it blew off. Yeah, yes, it does look good. Does. I'm, I'm. Do you remember, Tommy, when I said that? Uh, well, I will probably take some partial, but uh, I said that I'm riding just this as a you know mid time frame uh, play, just looking for those forty percent from like uh, sixty five cents when I was buying. So I, I was looking to unload at ninety cents uh, or nine cents. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I feel this could blast through to like uh, one point one, even. So I might I'll take partial, but we'll see how we react there. It it does look definitely. It's uh, it, it reminds good. me of Soul, like right when it was um you know chopping yeah. up into resistance, and then it I mean Soul ran from around eighty, FD2 around eighty, right? Around saving. eighty. Does, does yeah. it remind you? Yeah, around eighty. Yeah. 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 Or, or yeah. like even seventy, yeah. you know. I I think say can trade a dollar fifty. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's that's a good right observation. I have to agree. Good thing I'm long and I can be <laughs> <laughs> But you guys, yeah. Remember, yeah, I mean, right? I mean, I, I'm I'm very bullish. Saying I'm feeling even then, I'm feeling a little bit underexposed to it. I I think it can rip, man. <laughs> Now these these alts look uh, very good, man. Uh, yeah, they are legit manipulating the the sentiment here, and I understand that. Like, even I myself question, like I I sometimes question myself as well. So I understand how hard it must be for 
uh, people that are new to this market. Like, if you just went through the bear market, you are still new to the market. Okay, just just so you understand. How are you playing this one, Tommy? Are you in spot? Yeah, I'm I'm chilling in spot right now. Um, I'm gonna. I I think we're gonna see a bit more chop for another like week and a half before we get the vertical move. So I'm not, I haven't touched it on perps yet, but I'll probably look to add perps on top of the spot that I currently have. Um, yeah, cause I'm feeling very bullish on this token right now, but you know, Bitcoin is, is obviously still chopping around in this range can stab a little bit lower, yada, yada, yada. So, um, I haven't, you know, tacked on perps as aggressively as I would like to, um, yet but i you know i i will say like i like i said i think we're gonna have some some upward chop before that happens and then probably some sort of acceleration next week you think speaking of chop what what does that like button look like we were at we were at 86 last time i was looking will that was about two minutes ago wow let's let's push it to 110 guys and will is about to drop alpha let's give it another 20 minutes right so that there's time for him to drop that alpha but uh, yeah, that's only like twenty likes away. So let's do this, guys. Let's Heck do yeah. this. You know, on, there are, there are one hundred and thirty people watching. So one ten likes is nothing, and you guys have two accounts, right? So yeah, smash it, guys. Smash it. I don't. Do you guys think? I mean, it almost looks more like uh, more like soul in here than it does up here. You know what I mean? Where it almost looked double toppy, and then it just. I don't know. I mean, either way, higher, but like, you know what I mean? Like, this was really the first leg. I, I, I think Spy is about to. Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I, I think Spy is about to chop, Will. <laughs> I, it'll I, it'll I get don't a job, know, well. man. Like, I, I think, I think Spy is, is doing very similar to what Bitcoin is doing. And they're both going to head the same direction. I think Spy is. I think Spy is going to rather like it's going to be in a range between like, let's say four thousand six hundred to let's say five thousand. I don't know two hundred. So it's probably going to be in this range for another year, in my opinion. I think I think the recession, like like the the market drop, only comes in. Uh, like I do not think it probably comes this year, though. Not yet. Even if there are rate cuts, I do not think it comes. We'll see. But so far, it looks very healthy and it gives a uh, nice room for risk assets to flourish for the next year, in my opinion. Basically, right, I'm... basically any pullback on SPX until four thousand one hundred is just a higher low. And if I'm, I'm gonna give them ten more minutes, and I'll, and I'll go on cam to show you guys too. If we can get to one hundred and ten, if we can't get to one hundred and ten, oh, we're just losing more opportunity. Time? Is it soybean time, guys? Yeah. You guys are really going to make this happen. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy yourselves. Get the trade and scalp trade. Scalp trade long. I don't know, man. Oh, dude, this literally 1198. Okay, hang on. We, we actually drew something out on here the other day. I'm pretty sure we called this move, guys. I'm not even kidding. On soybeans? Yeah, man, I'm pretty sure it was on. It was on a what second chart yesterday. I know, yeah. but I remember it was at like 12:40. Oh, what did I come back to? Oh my goodness, soybeans, man. Soybeans. <laughs> oh, what did you guys do to make Tucker put that up? They didn't get enough likes, man. Tucker, um, how, how do you think the the sales on soybeans affects uh, 
Apple's uh, iVision Pro sales seems that they're kind of it's a, at it's similar, an inverse, similar valuations. It's an inverse relationship, Will. Inverse. All right, let me let me drop some alpha. I can't stand this. Is painful, man. The soybean it actually hey. trades kind of cleanly, which is funny too. There you go, guys. I apologize. I had to go off camera. I I had to get another cup of coffee. I'm uh, we're, we're sleep training my seven month old right now, and he had me up. In the middle of last night, he said, it's time to wake up. He said, come pick me up right now. And I was like, dude, I'm trying to sleep. And he was like, get your ass in here and hold me. And I was like, all right, man, here I come. So I got up. He's screaming at me. He's like, get in here now. I I hold him. He's fine. He's loving it. It's like two in the morning, three in the morning. I try to set him down. I'm like, I love you, buddy. You're going to get through this. Like, I'll be just in the other room. He starts screaming again. He's like, don't you dare set me down. I swear to God. So it was a long night for Max. Um, so, yeah, I'm on my second cup already, which is dangerous. I try to wait to have my second cup of coffee until after market check, but. Is that the coffee bomb of yours, Max? The legendary Max coffee? Is no, I didn't. I don't have one of those. That was a that was a, a fan of the show, man. He made a he made a <laughs> cup of uh, or he made a coffee cup that had my face on it that said, good morning. Right. How are you? What are you seeing in the markets? <laughs> which is pretty epic. He just made it on his own. Like we don't sell, we don't sell that mug. Um, I love it. But I want to, I want to go over some alpha, man. I I recognize we got a guy in here named Peter. Peter is always asking about Caspa. Um, And for good reason, Peter, because Caspa is going to be a top 10, a top 10 project. It has all of the makeups to enter the top 10. And most importantly, it has a smart and cultish community i'm gonna steal the chart tucker i'm gonna show i'm gonna drop some alpha you need the caspa alpha i know that you can drop some alpha but the amount of time that i spend staring at these charts you you can't do what i do you have a life Tucker. (laughs) you have a life you have friends all i do is stare at the caspa chart let me do it i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and uh let max jump on this and uh i guess we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow which means another day lost on the potential move here that i'm seeing in the charts so uh, good luck, guys. I'll be in here, but uh, yeah, I will say uh, it kind of sucks to suck, but it would be nice to put this information out there for you guys. They went that hey, they got pretty spoiled with the alpha man. Um, can't hit a hundred likes on the video. We can do better than Dude, that. They're gonna guys. get there. They're they're gonna get there. They're gonna get there. Don't even don't even worry about it. They're gonna get there. They're yeah, 94. 94. They're gonna get there. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the Casper Alpha. Okay, first and foremost. Let's just look at Cass USD. Just a quick reminder. This is where we're at. This 1.618 right here. This is concrete. All right. This is this is concrete. This is at basically just under 10 cents. I think that this is your like reaccumulation phase of a lifetime here. Okay. Peter, let me know if you're still watching in the comments. I'm I'm trying to speak to you here, brother. Reaccumulator. Yes, this is the reaccumulator. All right. So we start here. And we'll we'll just for perspective, we'll show where I, I got this, you know, this this little fractal from. In my opinion, it's basically doing what Solana did last cycle. All right. It's a little zoomed out here. I'm trying to squish it all together, but oops, this is effectively where we're at right now. Where we are basically at a $14 soul. All right. This is US dollar. Now let me show you. Everyone's like, Casba's dead, it's not moving. I'm going to sell all my Caspa and buy one of these new shitters that's moving. All right, here we go. You're going to make me do it. You're going to make me cook. I'm going to do it. The 65-day Caspa ETH reaccumulator. All right. From high to low, this is the Caspa ETH pair. All right. From high to low, it spent 65 days reaccumulating against ETH. Parabolic expansion to the upside to the 3.618 FIB. From high to low and then before we blast it off another 65 days we blast off 3.618 look at where we're at right now from high to low 65 days is coming up january 23rd i would expect caspa eth to start moving aggressively again and from here that would potentially be a 325 percent move against eth which i also expect to start moving up very very soon okay So we are almost to the end of the 65 days. Now, I'm not done yet, Peter. I'm not done. Caspa BTC. 
another 65 day reaccumulator. Same exact thing from high. This is CASP BTC, CASP paired against Bitcoin from high to low, 65 days, then boom, high to low. And then, you know, this was kind of like a little deviation or whatever, but from when we started to really move up aggressively, 65 days. And then look where we go. 3.618, 3.414, whatever, you know, within this little golden pocket. Okay. Same thing. 65 days is coming up on January 23rd. What do you think happens from here? Huh? What do you think happens from here? And interesting, you know, this could be 230% from here. Now, if we go to Caspa ETH again, it could potentially, assuming it hits the 3.618 again. So remember, Caspa BTC could go up 230. Caspa ETH could go up 322. That aligns perfectly with my thesis that ETH BTC is going to continue to outperform. Look at all of that confluence across all tickers. Caspa USD sitting on the 1.618 golden pocket. Reaccumulation phase of a lifetime. Caspa ETH looking coiled for a big move up. Caspa Bitcoin looking coiled for a big move up at the 65 day mark. But Caspa BTC is not quite looking as primed as Caspa ETH because of the intermarket analysis. ETH wow. should outperform Bitcoin. <laughs> Boom. Let me get to 100 likes, guys. Come on. Wh who else is giving you that alpha, man? Who else is showing you that? Who else is showing you that? Absolutely cooking, man. Max, what I'm seeing is lots of Caspa uh, community members uh, getting frustrated with the price. And that's what I love to Good. see for, for further continuation. But I think there is a little bit more pain to it first, still. Like uh, time-wise. doesn't have to be that much percentage-wise, but time-wise. I could see that. I could certainly see that. Absolutely, but I'm following the uh, the 65 day, the 65 day reaccumulation for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, there's uh there's some equal lows right here that uh that need to get hit. So, so let's see. We could uh oh oh no, look at this. Look at there's some uh some equal lows down here, guys. Look at this. Oh, these are equal. Shoot. Well, I guess we're going back down there, guys. What's the pricing? Like it doesn't even show. It's like <laughs> zero, 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 zero. I don't even know. This is cheap. That's where Sisu bought, man. <laughs> Basically. Like, where did where did he hear about it? I did not hear about Caspa until it was uh, like what was it like? Uh, I don't know, August two thousand twenty three. I didn't hear about it before. Yeah, Sisu's just good like that. I don't know. He's just uh he's the researcher. <laughs> yeah. Max, pull up Clean Spark, man. I want to I want to see Sure. If we expect ETH to outperform Bitcoin and we expect Caspa to outperform ETH, then Caspa will be a monster, isn't it? Peter, like that is that is exactly correct. That is astute. But like yes. all mo most alts will outperform both BTC and ETH if uh, the market has liquidity flowing in. But the problem is that then most alts will outperform on the downside. So you need Jack, to. Do you know what chart this is? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what the heck, man? But this alpha is not for the public. That's true. Just, just wanna mention those of you that wanna know that alpha, uh BB Discord. CLSK got murked, man. <laughs> Who could have foreseen the move up and move down when it was trading at four? Mm -hmm. Wow man, look at that thing destroyed prometheus in shambles man where's prometheus <laughs> <laughs> i time know to time to shove in time to show in i mean it looks like it could be retesting that july high i need this to be the low oops i mean this could be you know this could be your spot 
right here. You're going to probably need this to hold right here, you know. No worries, it will. Yeah. Even if it goes a little bit lower, who cares? It's going higher. It's going to 20 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's going to need Bitcoin to just, I mean, it's going to need Bitcoin to rip, you know, which it oh, could. Yeah. Let's see what MSTR is doing. Interesting. So, like all three MSTR, um, CleanSpark, and Coinbase are having a pullback, right? Ah, <gasps> surprise. <laughs> Could it be that BTC made the pullback? Wow. We expect BTC to continue higher. Wow. So, yeah. that means these coins, these, sorry, these uh, stocks, they will bounce, you know, they all, all of these are at support. Uh, Wow. Wow. It's like <laughs> Owen Wilson. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Do not so over good. guys, do not over complicate the basic SRs. <laughs> Look at this range. Oof. But if we apply some Iliad waves here, you know, theory, maybe <laughs> we find out some C wave that's going into E wave that will cause a fast upside which will cause the downside abc correction and then we will see wow nine hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, this looks kind of nice honestly yeah yeah it does jesus but what's crazy is that blackrock now owns like sixteen thousand bitcoins right but um but microstrategy owns like one hundred and sixty thousand <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, let's look at some of this. Let's look at some of this here. Yeah, man, we're still we, we still got room to go, bros. We we still got some room to go. Look at this chart, man. You want to fade this chart? You want to fade this chart? Look at this range. Really? It could never be me. Yeah. That could never be me. It's actually juicy support right there. Right there. Yeah, it is juicy. You see it. You see it. Of course I see it. <laughs> this is the juice. Could even stretch it under here a little bit. Bring it all the way over. Oh, man. Look at all that interaction. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, at some point, listen. At some point, uh, probably not so far from here, we will reach the big range high. Then possibly we're gonna get you know the reaction down. And when that happens, that's your last opportunity to buy cheap before the real super cycle. And I do believe then the super cycle comes. You're saying the super cycle? <laughs> I, I'm saying the super cycle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it's a meme. But I love to meme, and uh, and when this, whenever this chart breaks to the upside, and I'm pretty positive that it does at some point, it's uh, going to have you know Bitcoin cycle on its own. It ain't going to be, and I believe it's like the last major cycle, right? Like to make money on, and then it's going to be more like BTC really trading as gold or something. But but this is an this is a huge opportunity. I'm saying that BlackRock is accumulating since 2018 over the counter. <laughs> it doesn't measure it. You think this is the last cycle, Jackus? Not the last cycle as for like uh, alt or anything. And I do think like there will be future upside. I'm talking like where Bitcoin doesn't trade as every other market, but it goes on its own. Like in 2016, uh, 17, it was a, like, it obviously it was going up based on uh, the world liquidity too, but it had a cycle on its own, like its own adoption its own huge inflows and 
it's it can be seen on all these other charts. And since 2017, there was no cycle. And I'm saying that it's going to have a cycle on its own. Yeah, that's fair. I can see that. What is this that I have drawn here? What is okay. this? Huh. Interesting. That's Bitcoin against liquidity, right? It's Bitcoin divided by M2 money supply. Hmm. Big level. <laughs> Big level. Big level. Big level. Big level. But you know what I think needs to get hit? The like button. <laughs> yes. Right here. Right here. I think this level, basically retesting this high time frame supply, I think that needs to get hit. I mean, I think where we're at right now, like if you had to, if you had to cycle it, I mean, you probably, you know, something like this. I think this is kind of where you're at. You know, this is like your first big pause, big sell off. And then I think, you know, you just kind of curl your way back up. And then I think from here, you probably get a big correction, you know, something like this. Gun to my head. I think that's probably what happens. A pretty decent sell off in legacy today. Yeah. Three quarters of a percent. Nothing crazy, but worth talking about. Tucker, what are you farming right now? Uh, farming a few things, man, but let me. Uh... Let me go ahead and take this from you. Oh, what do we think about this? I was just seeing Tia, at least at the low, look pretty similar to Beam. And then it kind of, I mean, it kind of started this whole move up and then Beam went sideways. I'm thinking maybe we could do something similar. And this is assuming the top's not in. I mean, you could do it like this if you wanted to, but, you know go up to like 25 and then do this potentially i could see it i could for sure see that because you just you kind of had this whole move up like that and then it just ran flat so i don't know i think we could maybe do that on tia mm -hmm. My thing with Tia is that I just think other things look a little bit better right now. I thought it had its mo I thought it had its uh its chance to really uh to break out over the weekend and it didn't take it. Yeah, it kind of looks like it almost topped a little bit here locally. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if TIA is, is ready to top, man. I think after airdrop season I could I could make sense of it. But I feel like we've got a lot of time, and I, I really I, it doesn't feel like it's had a blow off top to me for such a hot ticker. You know, it is up 10x from from its opening price, but it doesn't feel like it's had that blow off top. You know, e even like the soul move to 100 120 bucks felt a lot more explosive to me mm -hmm. than what's happened with TIA, and for a fresh chart. This doesn't feel like euphoria. This almost feels like a, a complacent grind upwards or something. It's bizarre. I feel there is a decent support at 15.6. Uh, I think the TI is going to retrace there, and then uh, it's going to continue higher. Yeah. But I wouldn't expect any crazy blow off top right now. But it's nice, you know, it keeps grinding higher. Like, you should be unbothered, moisturized, happy, <laughs> flourishing in your own lane. Oh, I am, Dracus. I am. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. The uh, the BB Discord was in at a green box, man. Tell you what. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Uh, there is a question from Champ. Jake, is if you see BTC trading uh, like gold, what do you think alts will do if you're willing to expand on your knowledge? Well, I do think that like... Uh, you know, they, they will start to gain, they will have to start to gain some like real world use case, some of these alts. And I think they will, you know, uh, like the internet companies, it also took a long time to really find uh, true use cases for them. Like if you think about it, the internet has been for a while, but you know, even freaking social media, they didn't start before 2012 so, or something like that. So the the tech is out there you know it's going to evolve and these projects they will they will like there'll be projects that launch there'll be something new great they will pump a lot and gold, btc will be like when i say btc will trade like gold i mean it will be relatively stable with low volatility will trade like lots of other macro assets i mean al already at this point BTC is basically a Wall Street asset. It's uh, tamed fully. Uh, if you gonna put, you know, just today I was sharing a chart of, not sure if you guys saw that, but basically Bitcoin since 2018 is the same as BlackRock price. <laughs> is that percentage like, wise, it's the same as well? No, not per and that's what I keep on saying. That okay. per Percentage wise, well, I, I haven't checked percentage wise, but I would assume not because uh, they were probably different market cap. But maybe they were too. But I doubt it, right? Like BTC was appreciating more obviously because I believe it was lower market cap. But what I'm trying to say is like, man, uh, like two two thirds, two thirds of all Bitcoin trades are down. Are done OTC nowadays to not move the price. When you do a OTC deal, you do not move the price. It just swaps. You know, it's a, it's a trade behind the desk. It's not buying from the open market. So, and and most of it is done by large institutions. Uh, most of the miners are owned nowadays by BlackRock and other of these big ones, like the, like the stock price. Uh, and it's so uh, logical, right? Not now they are pumping all these ETFs. It's under SEC regulation. So like you can still use BTC the way it was initially designed. You can still store your wealth in it and not have it uh, confiscated, right? Uh, from government or anyone, you can move cross border. It's, it's a good store of wealth value, but its price is capped and controlled by wall street nowadays and that's what you gotta deal with even as a bitcoin maxi i know it's hard to to, to come with this realization but it is what it is tucker can you can you curate a chart for me can mm -hmm. you chart eth against the nasdaq eth against the nasdaq it's an interesting looking chart the ticker, or you want me to add it at the bottom? No, 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 no. The ticker. NDQ or NDX. Let's do NDX. Put it in log. Looks pretty bottom to me. Who's making screenshots there? I, I only did heard the camera. <laughs> I don't know. Tommy? Tucker? Not me. Who's the screenshot or? Oh, that was me. Sorry, I um, I just got a, I just got a DM from Fake Max. I was about to start messing with him. <laughs> Dude, there's been so many Fake Maxes lately. It's been driving me nuts. Every single day in Discord and Twitter, some dude is like, "Send me five thousand dollars." They'll like hit up somebody, send me five thousand dollars and deposit it into my new trading platform. You're a celebrity now. You're a celebrity, Max. Got to Got to do it. They can make compounded returns. <laughs> if you just double your money every single day for a year, you'll have this much money. This hasn't wow, even broken out, man. Amazing. Here is my money. 
I know this is this is one of my my favorite charts here. And if you look at uh, Bitcoin against the Nasdaq, you can see that it it arguably has broken out a little bit. Uh, but ETH against the Nasdaq has quite a bit to go. You'll want to chart BTC divided by NDX. No, similarly. man, no, this is it. This is it right here. Get rid of all this. Yeah, I mean, I I just I think mean, that ETH is about to absolutely steal the show, man. There's a lot of confluence across the board. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know what we'd like to see bigger. steal the show. What? It has a hat. <laughs> Dude, it, yeah, it I mean, does. it looks it looks ready to go. I mean, it's at thirty six and a half cents when the market's not looking great today. I mean, it's a, this is a very healthy, like, I mean, I, I, that's dramatic, right? To say that the market's not even looking good. <laughs> Things are barely down, but still. Look at the daily on it, Tuck. <laughs> Look at the daily on it, Tucker, and draw a, a swing high. Oh, it man. does look good, though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> this is the last chance I'm giving it, man. If it does not break out from something like this, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to double top. <laughs> I think it's going to break out, though. <laughs> I think he, it's going to break out. Tell me, when he said double top, I was like, I hear that meme. Babe, please stop <laughs> shorting. It's not going <laughs> now. Double top. <laughs> and then it ended up being real on Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing needs to go to, like, 50 cents, like, tomorrow. Yeah, it does. It really does. Never say never. <laughs> You guys know I have some pretty ambitious price targets for the dog whiff hat. <laughs> they know this is a <laughs> hat stays on, man. Hat stays on. I mean, look, let's talk about let's talk about dog whiff hat. It's gonna need soul to cooperate, which it looks like soul is trying. Okay. It's probably gonna need soul above 120, ideally closer to 150. And if dog with hat can go to a dollar, that's about a one bill market cap for dog with hat. We know that does it, earlier does it last year. Soul over 120 to do that? that though? Does it need soul over 120 to do that? I don't know if we do. I mean, no, you know what it needs is the Jupiter airdrop, man. That's all it yes. needs. That's yeah. coming in the next two weeks. I know. I know. It's going to be big. Yeah. I I mean, I don't think it needs it. I think it would certainly be like a nice tailwind to have soul pumping for sure. Yeah. Um, it doesn't need it though, but I think it would, I think you'd see it happen quicker. But we know that Pepe topped out at 1.5 bill roughly uh, last year during its run. So dog with hat goes to $1.50 would more or less be comparable to what Pepe did last year, which I think is possible, you know? Honestly, I like the Pepe me more, but I own Whiff. I'm all about it. Imagine the people that just joined and are like, all right, I'm going to watch what these sophisticated <laughs> people talk about. Oh, dog with wet head. Wow. <laughs> Someone asks you, hey, what do you guys do for work? Uh, me and my internet friends, we talk about um, <laughs> dog with hat, and we we put money in it. Wow, like a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I'm in. I work in finance. Business. I work in finance. Yeah, I work in finance. <laughs> we can say that now, man. We got ETFs. We work in finance. Oh yeah. All right, guys. What do you say we call it here, huh? It's going about an hour 43 guys thank you so much for being here as always if you haven't yet please consider liking the stream and also if you are new here this is market check brought to you by because bitcoin we are live five days a week monday through friday at 10 55 a.m eastern time it's an hour and a half to two hour long alpha dump we greatly appreciate your guys' support so definitely consider subscribing if you haven't yet so that you can be notified of when we go live um, let's see how we did on the likes today. 105 on YouTube. Not a bad day, guys. Not a bad day at all. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys want to join our Discord, the first link in the description below will take you to becausebitcoin.com slash premium where you can sign up to try our Discord. The cost of the gold membership is $149.99 per month. We are dropping our new flagship product called the BB Terminal. 
very close to the Bitcoin having. When that product comes out, it will be bundled in with our Discord and our premium offerings, and the price is going to go up significantly. So if our Discord uh, sounds interesting to you, and if uh, trying out the BB terminal, which is more or less going to be uh, a Bloomberg terminal, but for crypto bros, definitely consider getting in now so you can be one in the Discord, make money, have fun, make friends. It's a great time. Increase, uh, I don't know, what, what do they increase? Just everything, like across the board. It's just a fantastic experience. But also be early to beta test the the, uh, the BB terminal uh, and lock in your price of $149.99 per month because, again, like we mentioned, the price is going to go up significantly once we have the BB terminal. So it'd be good to get grandfathered in. You know, it would definitely be good to get grandfathered in. Um, but yeah, guys, that's really but all we've got today. If, Thank if you, you and if you guys do that, remember to use the link in my bio <laughs> and the code Jake is fifty to get a fifty dollar discount. Right? <laughs> if you want that fifty dollar discount, listen to Jackus. Go visit his Twitter. Click on his link. But then at checkout, you got to do something manual. If you want the $50 off, you got to type in Jackus50 for $50 off. But again, it's a good deal to get to get grandfathered in. I know right now it feels like it's full price, you know, because it is. But prices are going up significantly and it will grandfather you in and lock you in forever. And you're going to want to try out the BB terminal. But in the meantime, a little bit about our Discord and then I will kick it over to Tommy. We have an active positions channel. And I would say the main appeal of it is that we spend upwards of two hours every single day once at the New York session open, and then once at the New York session close. We do an all hands on deck team and community meeting led by the BB analysts, including myself. And we basically narrate everything that's going on in the markets. We talk positioning, uh, we talk updates, literally every step of the way, it's two hours per day. You guys can ask questions. And it's really fun, honestly. We have a lot of really great discussions. So if you're looking for your community, if you're looking for your group to take your trading to the next level, this is the, the market is simply too big to cover by yourself, you know, and, and I give props to my team earlier. The reason I felt conviction to flip bullish at the perfect time in Q4 of last year was because of my team. So I guess, you know, there there is a price to pay for it, right? It's 150 bucks a month. But if you go on our website and you read our reviews, you'll see that pretty quickly it pays for itself. And eventually we are going to close it because it's not going to end like a franchise where, you know, we get 5,000 people in there and we can't give everybody the attention that they deserve. So it's going to change, you know, and again, right now it's, you know, 150 a month. BB Terminal comes out, it's going to be significantly more than that. And I guess we are offering a special with Jackus's link and then also his code Jackus50. So go to his Twitter and check that out. But yeah, guys, we hope you will join. We've had a lot of new members recently. Again, thank you guys so much for being here for Market Check. I'm going to kick it over to Tommy and he can say a final farewell to you guys. All right. Yeah, guys. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much everything from us. Uh, a reminder to make sure to tune in for Market Talk with the legendary King Wabi at start time, usually 4.15 to 4.30 Eastern time, depending on when we finish up the afternoon Giga Chad call. Just had a bunch of, of new Giga Chads join, which uh super exciting. And um, you guys are going to have to wait for the next time that we open up uh, those free signups or the free one month signups uh, to, to get a deal like that again. I don't know if we're ever going to run a deal like that again. That was a uh, no. pretty anomalous, quite frankly. No, we're it was not. It my birthday. You know, <laughs> it was my birthday. I had to. I think, I I think Tucker it. might have a stroke if we ran that promotion again. Yeah, no more. No Tucker more. Jumping in. No, no, never. <laughs> Mr. CFO, man. Mr. Grumpy. Yeah. No free, no free giveaways. None. Fifty dollars discount is still freaking amazing on a one hundred and fifty deal, right? Yeah. Especially with all well, yeah, money. and and the price now is is going to look so much, you know, yeah. even more valuable than it is when once we drop the BB terminal, like Max was saying. So, uh, you guys are not ready for that. We are so 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 excited uh, to launch that. Uh, over the next few months but that's all from us guys we'll be back for another episode of market check tomorrow uh, that's usually start time around 11 a.m eastern time um, but yeah happy wednesday guys be safe have a great rest of your week and, and like i said we'll be back tomorrow we're gonna do the salute from tucker there we go